right, folks, welcome, 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 welcome out there. And most, I'm, he came back. I, I, we yeah. didn't rub you off yesterday, Gary. Yeah, so Gary Petco with us today. I'm Ernie Roberts, and I'm your host, and he is your co-host today for Math Line. There we go, both our names up there. Look at that. We are so glad to have you tuned in this afternoon. I know some of you are on break. I know a lot of you are on break, but mm -hmm. a lot of folks are still tuned in and so forth. And we're just having a good time here. We're going to have some good math stuff going on here. 844-686-2378. We want you to join us, all right? We need some calls here. We want to have a little bit of fun. It's a short week for us also. We're going to be here today and tomorrow. Yes. Gary said he probably won't be back tomorrow, but he said <laughs> that yesterday. So you never know, right around here. But I'm glad he's come back to help us out a little bit today, and we'll have some good fun with this. But in the meantime, give us those calls, all right? 844-686-2371. What do we do? Calls with a math problem. We would love to work it out with you together. Any age, young, old, veteran, all those good things. We want to hear from you, all right? We love hearing from you because you make the show rock. I love and, doing math. And Hey, absolutely. And what better way? Hey, it's a Tuesday afternoon. Join us. And how about it? Um, problem of the day. Let's see what we got there. This one's kind of wacko looking, Gary. And a lot of times people think that, is that F times X? No, it's what? That's a notation, yes. Yeah, it says a function of X or F of X, as we like to call it equals to 12 minus 3x. And we're going to evaluate one, two, three versions of that mm -hmm. function, f of negative 5 plus f of 3 minus, oh, that gets interesting, minus f of negative 2. And we're going to then completely simplify. In other words, we want to come down to one final answer. We're going to put all three of those numbers together and see where it goes, all right? Looks like a typical ACT problem. Hey, absolutely it does. So let's take a play at this. First of all, as we made mention, that does not mean to say some value of f times some value of x. It's basically right. a placeholder. Mm -hmm. It opens up a spot right here that we're going to fill in, and I'm going to rewrite this thing so we can play with it a little bit. We've got 12 minus that 3x, and we're going to look at each option here. We're going to look at the negative 5, we're going to look at what happens with 3, and we're going to look at what happens with this negative 2. And then we're going to put the results together as our recipe unfolds. So we're going to take the negative 5 function plus the 3 function, and then, oh, put that negative 2 in there, and then we'll subtract. That's a little different twist we'll on that. We'll subtract from the negative, maybe. Code. Yeah. So we'll see how that one packs in or packs out, see what we end up with. Now, how do we do this? You say, let's start at the beginning. Gary, what about, let's go with negative 5. Let's, let's substitute negative 5 in there for x. And in doing this... I always put a parenthesis around a negative number. Makes sense, yes. Because in this case, we're saying a negative times a negative, which is going to shoot that thing positive, all right? And a lot of times, when we put a squared there, and people type in their little calculator, they type negative 5 and then put squared. And it, what it does is squares the 5 and taps on negative. Absolutely. So parentheses, my friends, very important in these problems, especially when there's a danger of signs changing on us. And this one has definitely that. So, Gary, what we got here? 12, what are going to happen here? And then we should try to see it. Negative, let's see, let's see, think about the 3 times a negative 5 is a negative 15, but we're subtracting okay. that negative 15. So we can do it this way also, and right. it's going to come out the same way, I yeah. believe. If we, whether we mul we, we're still multiplying, then we're going to yeah. do the subtraction then. So subtract a negative means add, so 12 plus 15. And we get 27. 27. So there's our first number. Is that the final answer, folks? No, no, no. We've still got two yeah. more of these to go, right? So next one's a little bit easier. Not, a, not such a big nerve pill here. But let's see what happens when we stick in the 3. Gary, you mentioned substitution, so let's do it. So substitute that 3 in there for x, and now we're multiplying 3 times 3. Uh-huh. That's 12 minus 9. And that will give us... That's an easy one. That's a 3. Oh, yeah. We don't have to... We don't have, so, you know, some people have to feel like after they've done this, these positive negatives, rational numbers, business stuff, they think, oh, I've got to put plus a negative. Oh, you're just, you're going to do the no, same thing. Do the same it's, thing. It's, it's what you've been doing since first grade, folks. So mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Subtract, you got three left over. No problem. And it is positive. So far, everything's positive. Yep. So we will be adding those together. Now here comes our last little element of fun. How about it? Put in the function of negative two. Oh, we're back to one of those back negatives, to negatives again. Yeah. So mm -hmm. similar to the first one. So we're going to say, what, two, twelve, uh, what? Negative, minus 3 times a negative 2. Okay, there we go. Got that negative 2. Remember, folks, parentheses there. And finish it up for us here, Gary. That gives us a 12, down? subtract negative 6. Oh, yeah, you're into that subtract negative, which means basically what? 12 plus 6. So we're running through there, and we've got... 18. 18. 
All right, now, some of you out there who are adding together on Facebook, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't add them all Because we've got a little subtraction there to make you have to think just a tad, all right? So basically, the results here are going to be 27, tack on the 3, and then let's get rid of that 18. And you know what? I'm seeing 12. I you see seeing 12, 12 as well. Yes. And we did have quite a few of our Facebook folks saw 12 happening up there. And um, I tell you what. Folks, there's our problem of the day in a fairly good nutshell. We may look at that a little bit later on here again in the show, but I understand at this point we have a we're caller calling. waiting for us, so that's what we're here for. So let's do it. And by the way, while we're talking to this caller, you be sure to give us some calls. Once again, that number, 844-686-2378. We'd love to have wall-to-wall -wall calls. Keeps us from having to banner too much. Absolutely. But we enjoy the banner, yeah. but we would love to hear from you guys, all right? And that's what we're about today. So I understand we have a caller waiting for us. So welcome to MathLine this afternoon. And who are we talking to? John Marshall. Well, hello there. Is that John, John Marshall? John yeah. Marshall. John Marshall. All name. right. I like that. I like those two names. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. All right. And where are you calling from? Do you know what city or what county you're calling in from? Knoxville. Knoxville. All right. That. So we got a Knox County caller. So that's awesome. I'm John Marshall, what grade from. are you in? Second. Second, Second grade. Oh, well. You know, folks, we do. I said any age is fine. That's right. So we we go we're going young today, and we can we can, hey we can go the other end of the extreme. So you can give us calls, all right? Now, John Marshall, what kind of problem have you got for me? And uh, actually, for me and Gary. Students line up in three rows for a relay race. There are five students in each row. How many students are in the race? Ooh. Okay, so let's go here. You got three rows, right? They're lining up in three rows. And how many yes. did you say in each row there? How five. Many? Five. So we've got five students, we'll say, in each row. And we're wanting to figure out how many are in the race, correct? Yes. Because everybody's going to get to run. It's a relay, so for those of you... Say, I think I've heard about a relay. That means basically you run and you kind of like tap each other or something mm -hmm. and the next person goes. That's right, isn't it? So yeah. how many in the race? And we're looking for a total there, Mr. Gary. So would we have, have you drawn a raise before John Marshall to do this? Yes. Oh, he's, he's All right. already done so that. So we've heard a raise. Basically, we're going to create like a rectangle space, That's right. right? Does that sound like That's with an array? Mm -hmm. And let's see what happens when we do that. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend that this is where they're lining up. You know, they're lining up in okay. here. So this would be. That's the first row. Uh huh. And she's. He said three rows. If we made a student a circle. How about oh, that? How about it? Five students in each one. So you got five in each one, right? Yep. That's a good question. It's a good one, and you know what? We we don't have to know how to multiply to get That's this right. to work. To looks be honest, like it looks like it's introducing multiplication. Yeah, I think it is. That's a, and when when you said, John Marshall, you said you were in second grade, right? Yes. So you're you're getting a little thought of how to solve some math problems here and pull mm -hmm. things together. So you're doing pretty well. So that, does that picture make sense to you? <coughs> yes. Excuse yeah. me about that, everybody. It, uh, it does. It makes mm -hmm. me feel good here. So I'm seeing five here. I'm going to look at it one way. Mm -hmm. I see five here. Yep. And five here. And we could add those could together see. pretty easily. And, and you know what? I, I know when I used to do hide and seek when I was young, way back when I was young. <laughs> okay, a long, long, long. long time ago. But we count, you know, by fives or we count by tens and we'd say we get to 100. And so, so here we go. Five, ten, what? 15. 15. I see 15 total. It's a little skip counting. <laughs> so, now, let's see where we're going to go with this. If we've got 15 right there, and we have, we could, we could also go another way, couldn't we? We could take the students and see which row they're in. Or, or I guess we're working that way, but that gets kind of complicated. But, you know, we could do another way. We could go three, three, three. three. Yeah. Going here, three by three by three, three. And, you know, we get 15 again. We get 15 again. Does so that sound about right? do that, you know. So does that help you out? Do you see what we did there? Does that make sense? Yes. All right. And we could easily make some more arrays on top That's exactly like right. That. That's pretty cool. And 
You know what? There's so many things. We'll talk about that just a little bit. Thank you, John Marshall. We appreciate you. Thank you for Thank calling you. in. Okay. So and going back to that problem, though, we're also starting to see, ooh, how about it? Three, three by five rectangle. Three by five. Getting a little bit of area mm -hmm. working. You're also looking at um, commutative property. Mm -hmm. Three times five is the same thing as five times three. You know, in some European countries, they don't use the word times. They use the word by anyway mm -hmm. for them oh. to visualize area. Three by five. Three by like three. A, like a two by four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, what do we, and when we say two by four, how do we write that? We look at it as by four. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it. absolutely, yeah. Visualize two by four. Those of you who have been out there buying wood, okay, mm -hmm. two by eight. You That's know, right. All those kind of boards. That's what it is. That's the dimensions. That's the that's area. So that's pretty cool. Well, thank you. That gets us started now, folks. Second graders are leading the way today, all right? So 844-686-2378. We want to hear from you, the rest of you guys out there, all right? So give us a call, and let's see what we can do today on Math Line. Now, you know me, and you know us, we like the algebra, and we kind of hang with that a little bit. But the you know, problem we're going to look at here, actually, they're getting in more in pre-algebra classes. They are getting in And seventh and eighth grade math start doing cool. problems like this. So uh, we're going to move it up a little bit. And some of you are going like, oh, no, Ernie is going to make us feel like we're not smarter <laughs> than sixth graders. Oh, yes, folks, you are. You are out there. But uh, we want to take a little problem here and see what we can do with it, all right? It's an inequality. And if there was an equals, everybody goes, yay, we like those. Sometimes when the inequalities pop up, we get a little nervous. We do. Because the words less than or greater than, the, the first thing I think people have trouble with is what does that mean? Yes. Because they sit there and go like, oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's. Is it less than or greater than? Well, it makes a big difference it's which way it goes, does. you know. So I don't know. I always like to tell my students in the past that uh, if it points to the left, left is less than. You I know? like that. If it opens to the right, if it points to the right, it's going to be a greater than situation. Or you can see that it's kept basically you start small and you get a little bit larger. Uh, yeah, there's lots of ways people kind of make that work in their head. But I just think it points to the left. It's, that means the less than. That way you can, L -L. Read, it, you can read it left to right. Like a book. Mm -hmm. This expression is less, less than. than. Yeah. And okay. if you switch the arrow the other way, it's greater than. I but like in that. this case, we are going to be at the less than, at least for a while, it looks mm -hmm. like. It may change on this. You never know with inequalities. So, Gary, are you, are you like me? I like to get my y's and x's like on to get the, the y's left. on the same side. And okay. especially on this because it's going to be so much easier to read in the end where I do a shape. Absolutely. Where I like I put the y's, on the variables on the left. Awesome. So, let's do that. Let's knock out. An 8y, since you agree with me. Yeah, I, I'm always glad to know when you agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see where this is going to take us. It's going to take us to a negative 4y, I believe. Right. Which always, it always, my friends out there, when you're doing inequalities, that should go like ding, 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 a little, a little red flag signal Absolutely. says, I've got to be careful in a little bit. But right now, let's just play it out. Keep the 7. We haven't switched anything. We just moved something from the right to the left. And, you know, we talk about subtraction property or an addition property. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you hear me say of equality because when we're dealing with equations, it's equalities. But there's also properties of inequality, and we're using the inequality here. So Absolutely. all we did here was simply subtract it to both sides, and we're going to be left with that minus 5. By the way, do not lose that minus, okay, or that negative 5 on that because it's important. Got to stay there. Even though you lost the 8y, you can't take the negative 5 away. It's still got to be a minus negative sign there. So where are we going to go from there, Gary? I like to get rid of the 7. Let's get rid of that constant. That thing is sitting there looking at us. So we're going to take that to both sides. And, oh, we got to subtract again. But we better watch out because that's doing something fun over there with the negative and the negative coming together. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're adding now, folks. We're getting rid of these. So we've got a negative 4y. And now we got a negative 5, and that would be just like saying plus a negative 7. That's right. And we are still hanging on to this negative 4 for dear life. Do not lose it yet, all right? It's there. It's still there. But we have a little problem. Mm. I'll let you take it from there. What's our little problem? Well, when we're dividing or multiplying by a negative with inequality, that gives us a perception we're switching things around. Yeah. So we're going to basically have to change directions change on Change directions. Things. So we divide by a negative 4 because we want to know what 1y looks like on that left mm -hmm. side, not what negative 4y. Right. So we're going to lose that negative 4, and I'm going to draw it on out here because we need some space for our number line to play with it. And I see we're going to get a 3 on the right-hand side because I know a negative divided by negative gives us a positive. But we said something about here. What happens here when this goes positive? That switches the direction. 
Oh, uh, yeah, because what was negative has now basically become positive. Absolutely. What was positive now becomes negative. So when you deal with that, mm -hmm. by the way, that only happens when we have to divide or multiply by a negative, negative. value. Folks, you don't do that except when you're doing that, come to that point. Mm -hmm. Because that had been 4y, even though there's a negative 12 here, it, wouldn't, it would not have been a problem. But the minus 4y or the negative 4y is our problem here. So that's what it looks like. So let's open a circle somewhere. Because it says graph. It doesn't just oh, solve. Oh, yeah. We got, we got the solving part. Well, mm -hmm. we hope we got the solving part. We're going to have to check it in a minute. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And that was, that's another way to talk about it. And we're going to graph it, number line, because this is basically it's a one variable. So um, we're just going to worry about putting it on this little number line. I guess we'll find a three somewhere here. It doesn't really matter. Put it there somewhere. That looks, that's a good place, Manny. So which direction we shade with greater than? So we're getting greater means bigger. Yep. So, so we're going to the right. right because less than says go to the left, right? That's another reason why mm -hmm. I like to make sure that Y gets on, or a variable or whatever gets to the left side because it's easy to see which way you're going from there. All right, now we check. You say, well, Ernie, how do you check? You got a bunch of numbers you shaded there. Basically, we're saying any number that is what? Greater than, Greater than three. Three should work in this problem. Now, three doesn't work. No, no. But, if it, but it will give us it will give us the same number on both sides, but we don't want it equal. Right. We Correct. want it, we want it to be something less than. So I think we pick one of our solution numbers. That's right. That's so how about four? Four works. It's greater than three. Four is greater. I, I like that. So let's go over here and see what happens when we put four times four. Add seven. Put less than eight times four. Minus five. All right. And a lot of times people wonder how do you check an inequality. It's really not hard. You pick one of the numbers and pick a whole number. You don't need to pick, what, three-sevenths, three and three-sevenths or something right. like that. Pick it easy. Pick something that's going to work for you because this basically says if it works for one, it's going to work for all, all of them. them. Everything works through there. So, Gary, what have we got on the left-hand side? Let's side, see. i got a four times four is 16, and then I add a three to it. Looks like 23. I did oh, that did we add a seven? Seven. I'm sorry, I had a and seven. You did get a still 23. Get 23 still. You're like me. You jump ahead a little bit. I saw that three yourself. right above yeah, it. Yeah, I, I love it. And I'm glad I'm not the only one that jumps around a little <laughs> bit. Um, ADD lovers, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you, okay? Um, eight times four gives us 32. What? And then take away five, that's uh, 27. I think I got that one correct. You got it. And there are, well, we'll try to get our proof for you there. It just kind of went away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 27 is definitely bigger than the 23, all right? So there's now where 23 is less than 27, so that works. Now, while we're waiting for a caller, let's do this. Let's suppose I shaded it the wrong way. Let's suppose mm. I didn't change my inequality, that Great. I had y less than three up here, Great point. and I had drawn it, woo, aren't I good? You know, whatever. So, and I'm thinking, well, go check. What number would you choose? Well, anything less than three, why not? Zero. zero. I think zero would be so easy. Mm -hmm. So let's suppose we had picked zero as a thing, and we're going to show folks that it doesn't hold true. So in other words, this is good. This one is a good solution, all right? We're going to show you a bad solution over here. If we pick up, for example, something if we gone shaded the wrong direction. So we put four times zero, add seven, and we're going to check and see if this is going to make any sense which we hope it doesn't because it's not supposed to, right? That's exactly <laughs> so, right. And um, I get seven. That one's easy. Yes. I, I don't even need your help on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and we got negative five. That's not true. And that is definitely false. So we can say zero is a bad solution, and therefore you don't want to shade in That's that right. direction. All it does is take one test point, and you're, and you're in business or you're out of business. And parents, I'll tell you, if, you're, if your children are coming home talking about an open number line, this is an example, a type of open number line, one that doesn't have a set number of mm -hmm. values on it. It okay. just keeps going on and on, left and right. Right. It can start anywhere. It's an open number yeah. line. And, and, and it don't always, you don't have to always write a zero, one, two, three, tick, Correct. tick, tick. All right. And that's what we get here. But the idea is all, it's relative. Which direction from the three are you going? And in this case, to the right, obviously the numbers that are bigger, to the left, the numbers that are smaller. Right. Right. So. Good job. Uh, and that's one of those things where I like having another idea, another mindset in mm -hmm. here that tells us a few other things and, and basically jars my brain a little bit too. So speaking of jarring us, let's get a call or two in, all right? We do want to hear from you guys out there. 
And uh, while we're at it, let's talk a little bit just about our Facebook page, Gary. We have uh, a lot of folks, we always check them on yes. there. And we have some who do take care of us there. Some of you need to go ahead and like us. We're, we're wanting to get to that thousand moment by maybe by Christmas would be nice. That'd be a great Christmas present. That thousand likes or loves and all those good things. Reactions. Uh, and, so, and many of you relax, react every day, but like us, period. Like us, I like our page, too. And that is www.facebook.com forward slash mathline online. All right? And again, share us. Share us with your friends. Mm -hmm. Share us with other people out there because that's how we spread the word about MathLine. You know, I really do. I go places and I, I have people who I don't know who they are, mm -hmm. but they come up and say, I watch the show, I watch the show. And it's, it, makes, it makes you feel good when those things happen, but we want to have more of those kind of things, all right? So we want to spread the word. We think we've got a good thing going here. And also, it's here to, it's a community service. It's that's here to exactly help, right. our, help our area and our folks and our students. Uh, and speaking of which, so let's help someone. We've got someone with a call waiting here. So welcome to MathLine this afternoon. And who might I be talking to? Hey, this is Alan Douglas. Alan Douglas, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Well, good. Where are you calling from, sir? Uh, I'm calling up from Monroe County. Monroe County. Right. Well, we're glad to have you with us today. What kind of problem you got for us? Well, I'm trying to help my son on his geometry homework here, but uh, I don't think I know the answer either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, let's see what we can do. We got two head we got three heads working together, including yours, and, and four counting him. So let's see what we got. All right, so the question is, does the circle with center at the origin and radius 5 pass through the point, and then in parentheses, 3, negative 4? All right, so you've got a radius of 5, Okay. And you're at origin zero zero. You good with that? Follow where right, I'm going. Got that. All right. So basically, the question is: Does three ne Did you say three and negative four? Yeah, that's correct. Um, does the, the circle contain that point? In other words, the the boundary, the the actual circle. All mm -hmm. right. So many times we hear the word circle, we think of all that space in between. We're talking about actually that nice boundary that they've created with that radius of five. So here's how it works. And uh, I tell you what. I love this problem. Let's do, let's put <laughs> let's put upside down yeah. graph here. Can we graph it for you? Uh, yeah. And here we go. And we're going to run a radius of five out here. And we're going to run a radius of five here, and down through here, and so forth. And let's see if I can make a pretty circle. In other words, um, Alan, we got a circle here, and the oh. question is, and I may or may not make let's it. Let's see if you can do this circle. Oh boy. Well, we're interested in what? Three what? Negative four. Negative four. I'm close, according to this. Maybe I didn't do a good circle, all right? <laughs> yeah. So, but there's a way to test. There's a way to test. And the, the equation for a circle is take this x minus, in this case, zero, which is the coordinate of your center. Okay? You see what I'm doing? Right. We're right. going to square it. And we're going to take this y minus the coordinate of your center, which is also zero, since we're where? Zero, zero. And x equal to the radius squared. So that's our equation, that's the equation of the circle, and really and truthfully, my equation probably is more likely to cut, my circle is really probably more likely to cut through here. And if you'll notice, I did that because I said we should, we should inherit that point. Now let's see why it works, all right? So we're gonna put in, the x, which is what? Three? Three is the x, yeah. So three minus zeros. And over here, we're going to put in the negative four minus the zero. Gary, am I putting this in the right you order? Sure. You tell me. And then we got five squared because we already know what that is. Are we good so far? You see where we are? E yeah. yeah. Okay, in other words, our x and our y, which, by the way, that was our three negative four is x and y. Okay. This is, our, this is our center, whatever the points were. If they put it away from the center, you would still use those numbers and put a minus mm -hmm. between them. Put a minus there. Now, what is 3 minus 0? That one's pretty, pretty straightforward, and it? it's going to be 3, right? 3 minus 0 inside the parentheses? Mm -hmm. Alan, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, we'll square it. Over here, I've got negative 4, and I mentioned earlier we want to keep that inside parentheses squared equals 5 squared. I've got a 9. I'm going to have a positive 16 because a negative times a negative gives me 16. And there's 25. See where our numbers are leading? 
Okay, yeah. These two add We're up. We're just following along. And that's how you know it's on it. If they equal out, it lies on that circle. It lies on that point. So it's a matter of, and like I said, my drawing of the circle, sorry folks, was not very pretty, so this really didn't count. But this point right here is definitely over three, down four. That is on your, that's going to be on your circle. Looks also like a Pythagorean theorem problem. And it, it looks very mm -hmm. Pythagorean, doesn't it? A mm -hmm. squared plus B squared equals C squared. C squared. That's a good question. Does that go, does that work for you? You follow what we did? Well, I'm not sure I understand it, but my son tells me he does. He does. Good. That's, there that's you go. what counts. <laughs> and if your son can explain it to you, then he definitely yeah. understands it. So we got the, but like I said, it, it comes back to the fact that you're, that starting with your coordinate and you're, you're dealing with where the center of your circle is. And your circle is at zero, zero, which helps. Hey, thank you, Alan. Thank you, John Marshall. Thank you, Gary. We will be back again another day like tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Thank you.